there is quite a bit of research on mycelium, but that typically comes from pure mycelium. And so mycelium, you can grow either on a solid substrate, like a grain per se. Um, so in traditional mushroom growing, they will take um, a mushroom species, uh, they will inject it into a certain substrate. Uh, this could be a liquid or a solid. Um, normally they grow it out on a grain and you get kind of like a myceliated grain log um, that looks a little bit like tempeh. And then um, a mushroom grower would take that and then they'd throw it into uh, sawdust or uh, straw or something along those lines. And then the mycelium will slowly grow it on this main substrate and then they'll start to grow mushrooms. Um, but what has happened in the last 20 years here is they've taken that myceliated grain and they've then taken that and they've dried it and they've powdered it with the grain that's left over from the substrate. And so what we've done uh, back in 2015 was what we tested over 50 different retail products. Um, some of them were mycelium based, some of them were mushroom based and looked at levels of beta glucans versus alpha glucans. And so primary alpha glucans are mainly starches. Um, the mushrooms do have a small amount of alpha glucans that's typically glycogen. Uh, and so what we saw was like mushrooms would have a very high amount of beta glucan, very low levels of alpha glucan. Whereas when you grew the mycelium on a grain substrate and that grain ended up in the final product, you saw the exact opposite. So very low levels of beta glucans, very high levels of alpha glucans. And so back to growing mycelium, uh, you can grow it in a liquid substrate. And so most of the research out there, when you actually read it, it's uh, based off mycelium that you grow in liquid culture. And so you would take the mycelium, you'd grow it in, it's like a nutrient bath, so it'd be different sugars, uh, proteins. And at the end of this, uh, you can drain off your liquid and then you have pure mycelium. And so as a researcher, it makes it a lot easier to eliminate different variables if you know you have a pure substance that you're working with. And so that's one of the confusions um, when trying to dissect the mushroom versus mycelium argument is uh, a large grain component in a lot of the products. Uh, and so, but even if you look at, there are certain pure mycelium products. So back in the eighties, um, Chinese researchers were trying to grow Cordyceps sinensis, which is the caterpillar fungus. So this is, probably the most expensive mushroom in the world at over $20,000 US per kilo. Um, most of it uh, gets sold in the Chinese market just because it's way too expensive. Um, it's not gonna end up in any supplement in North America, though there's many products that claim to be Cordyceps sinensis. Um, and so in China, they actually ended up growing the mycelium in liquid culture and that ended up turning into a product called Cordyceps CS4. So if you look up Cordyceps CS4 in the research, you'll find a lot of research on it. Um, so there is some, you know, there is research that supports the mycelium use, but even when we took uh, pure Cordyceps CS4 and we looked at the nutritional profile, we looked at the actives, even then we saw the mushroom had multiple times higher of primary actives like beta-glucans. And these beta-glucans are the main component in the cell wall. Um, so a lot of times people will talk about extracts being actually like concentrations of these compounds. Um, but in reality, uh, the mushroom is going to concentrate these compounds when they grow, and this is going to show up in the final product. And so given that beta-glucans are the main active in the cell wall of mycelium or the mushroom, uh, it can also be a fungal indicator too. Same with ergosterol. So ergosterol is similar to cholesterol in our bodies. And we can use that as almost a marker of fungal matter. So if these are high, we know we have a lot of fungal material there because it's the main component of these cell walls. Um, and that can just be almost a marker. Um, and compared to mushroom versus mycelium versus myceliate grain, because you have to kind of separate it, that out into almost its own component. Uh, we typically see the mushroom with much higher levels of actives. Uh, there's some minor exceptions there, and then you have to dive into the details, whether it's pure mycelium versus you know mycelium that's grown on grain. Um, so there's a lot of intricacies, and it's uh, difficult to educate people on this when there's so many different uh, they're getting bombarded with all this different information and it's really hard to sort through it all.